in light of having some lessons and losses in the past financially with financial advisors, that was part of my role in athlete development. Hey, guys, you have to learn what questions to ask an advisor to even be able to make a healthy determination whether this is someone that's credible enough to assist you, right? You want to have a laundry list of questions. It can be, you know, respectful five to eight questions that gives you a framework. And, and guess what? Not you, it's not just the questions. You need to know what the range of answer to have an expectation. Well, in light of me being a novice in business, and I did have some advisors, but I felt like my biggest lesson in relation to having a horrible experience working with a, a franchise that lacked some integrity, it was the lack of shrewdness, the lack of shrewdness. What does that mean? Shrewdness is a, you know, is, is a, I would say it can have a negative connotation and it can be negative, but shrewd, shrewdness actually has a, is, is a pretty virtuous. It actually says that God can be shrewd, right? So I think we have to acknowledge character attributes. And if God has a, a measure of shrewdness, that means there's a measure of detail and attention and diligence that is not, it's it's firm, it's direct, it's it's um it's 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 not fluffy, it's not just believing you with a, a naivety. There's detail, attention, follow up, and and exactness when it comes to shrewdness. And although I had learned some of those, I slipped up in the process, right? So here was my lesson from my failures of getting into a relationship with a franchise. You have to understand um, not just what the opportunity is. You also have to understand what's the max opportunity. I mean, like, what's what are you looking to get out of the relationship? And every at every stage, whether it's if they're going to give you a referral, you need to have two to three people with a general understanding, whether it's legal, accounting. You need to have those kind of people in their corner. It's called checks and balances. That was the lesson. I didn't, I didn't run every contract through a pipeline, right? Because at every stage, there's a lot of paperwork. And things can move along so fast where you can overlook details. You can overlook, you know, what, you know especially in um, what they call it, the fine print. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, so there's a common term, the devil's in the details, the devil is in the details. And guess what? The devil is a legalist. The enemy, the enemy of your soul, right? Not, not the, not the, not the, not the red guy that's burnt with, with flames, not with, with flames burning behind. Not the pitchfork guy. The enemy of your soul is a legalist. So anytime that we violate principle, we give access to the enemy to come in and not just accuse, but to come in and to afflict our lives. That's the spiritual principle. Anytime that you break a law, violate a principle, we kind of give access to our adversaries to come in and roll over. So that was a massive lesson. David, you, you weren't shrewd enough at every stage because every time there's a new contract, you need to, you need to read that with, with some due diligence. There, there's, there, there's a few more things. Um, I remember I have to give credit to the simplicity, and I know it didn't start with Aeneas Williams, but Hall of Famer, Aeneas Williams, I got a chance to watch his induction. And he started out this induction with some impactful people along his journey and how he was a learner. Man, I wish I was, I wish I had that quality. I was a, maybe I was just a prideful sack of rocks. You know, it says pride comes before the fall. You know, that's, that's a, you, you could take that one right there as, and, and guess what? Because we're humans, right? We will trust in our own understanding. Why? Because we trust in ourselves. But I want you to understand, no one has let me down more than me. No one has let me down more than me. I, and the New Year's resolution is one of the greatest indicators of that. We like a good, fresh start, right? Every day there's a new start. <laughs> we call it a new mercy. Every day there's a new start, but we like a good, clean, fresh slate, right? Monday, you just 
wipe that sucker clean. We're going we gonna, to we gonna start this over, right? But New Year's resolution is one of the greatest uh, indicators of promises that we make that we don't keep, right? Because we haven't set a plan to formulate a new habit, right? And instead of, you know, and I heard someone say this, and I think I've actually been, I've wired my life this way. Some people are goal setters, which is good. Goals are good. But I want to challenge you to focus on outcomes. I want to challenge you to focus on outcomes. In light of some of the lessons that I've learned, because I realized that with goals and expectations, there's tremendous room. They're flatlined. They're disappointments. You either get it or you don't. So instead of me setting firm expectations, I live with expectancy. I set a target or an outcome that I'm expecting to happen in my life. And I'm looking, and, and goals can be a part of the process of getting there. So I'm not anti-goal, but what is the outcome that we're looking for? What is the outcome? And it has to be a clearly definable outcome. And I think that's going to be a, a a, a recipe of rethinking and reframing that's going to help us find more success.